Hey mums, this is Nisha at The Nine Month Club at www.thenineMonthClub.com So today's video is part two on our pelvic floor series. So in part one we discussed the superficial muscles of the pelvic floor and now we're going to get into the deeper muscles of the pelvic floor. And the reason behind these videos is that I have quite a lot of clients that um, for whatever reason can't remember to do their pelvic floors on a daily basis and it's pretty common for all women during pregnancy not to remember to do their pelvic floors and I think I was one of them even though I know so much about it. Um, it's a mixture of pregnancy brain and a few other things but I think one thing that really helps with a lot of my clients is um, once they have a better understanding of the pelvic floor and what it does that they, they remember to do it a bit more frequently because it kind of makes sense to them whereas if we just talk about the pelvic floor and, and talk about um, using a, a pulling up um, kind of feeling inside yourself or stopping urination feeling it doesn't really make sense to a lot of people what they're doing so I wanted to explain this in a little more depth and detail so that you get a better understanding of, of actually how the pelvic floor is going to affect your um, particular pregnancy and how it, it works within your own body so you can visualize it. So I'm going to start by um, just explaining what the muscle looks like and um, how it supports our internal organs and then we'll go on to the exercise part. So first of all, um, the deeper muscles of the pelvic floor are shaped kind of like a fruit bowl, um, but they have two openings. So you've got an opening at the top here, and this is where the internal organs kind of sit, can you see that, kind of sit into, um, into the pelvic floor. And then it's kind of shaped, as I said, like a bowl, like that, and the muscle um, has an opening at the bottom and this is where the passage of your baby would come through. Um, so within this uh, opening at the top that's where your internal organs sit and when we talk about um, the pelvic floor supporting our internal organs we're talking about three organs in particular and that is um, the bladder, the uterus and the rectum and this is how they fit in. So you've got I'm going to draw this for you, or try and draw it for you. Um, first of all, you've got your bladder, which is kind of shaped a bit like that. So if this one is the bladder here, and then around it you've got, uh, or lying on top of it I should say, you've got the uterus, which is a bit like a golf club, or shaped a bit like a golf club. So that's your uterus lying on top there, and then coming behind this. So all these all these organs kind of fit against each other and support each other. So at the back, this is the rectum here. And as I said, this is quite a tight fit. So the rectum lies against the uterus, the uterus lies on top of the bladder. And because the uterus is lying on top of the bladder, you can see why we always need to go to the toilet during pregnancy. Because as the pressure grows and as the baby grows and there's more weight, it's always pressing down on a bladder. So we, we haven't got much space there. Um, and then all of these organs, as I said, fit into or supported by your pelvic floor muscle, which is the fruit bowl. just shaped a bit like that sorry it's not very good drawing but you kind of get the idea so that's what it looks like um so now let's talk about the muscle and how to, how it works and how to exercise it the pelvic floor muscle um it acts like a sling so it supports all those organs and keeps them in place now during pregnancy obviously the uterus is going to get bigger and heavier and that means that it's going to put a lot more pressure on the pelvic floor muscle so what happens is the pelvic floor muscle starts to give a little bit and then you've also got your pregnancy hormones so you've got relaxin and progesterone which make all the ligaments and uh, muscles in our bodies um, kind of lax and loose and that allows for growth during pregnancy without tearing but it also means that the pelvic floor is going to become very lax um, so with the added weight of the uterus and these um, hormonal relaxants within our system um, you're going to get the pelvic floor stretching and becoming saggy and uh, less elastic so this is why we need to exercise it every day because unless we exercise it we've got nothing to give the pelvic floor tone so it's never going to strengthen it's just going to get looser and looser and looser 
And what's going to happen then is if you don't exercise it and, it and it's looser and looser and looser, the internal organs are not going to be supported, they're going to fall apart and they're going to slip into your pelvic cavity and that's what's called prolapse. Um, so that's a very serious condition and needs major sur surgery to rehabilitate it and some serious intense physio afterwards um, to help you recover. So it's a process that you really don't want to go through. So this is why we exercise the pelvic floor daily. Now let's talk about how to exercise the pelvic floor properly. A lot of people will tell you that you need to just um, feel as if you're stopping the flow of urine or um, make a kind of pulling up motion inside yourself. All of these terms are very kind of uh, very vague and doesn't really give you a, a good idea of how it works. Um, so let's talk about that. Um, there's three breathing patterns that you want the pelvic floor to work over. Uh, so there's three sounds that you need to make. And one, the first one is F. So letter F for Freddie, make the first sound. So F is the first breathing pattern. Second breathing pattern is the letter S. So that's S. And the third breathing pattern is letter H. So and if you're using those breathing patterns, that will cover basically all of the breathing patterns that we use in everyday movement. So you're covered for anything that you might do, such as laughing, jumping, coughing, sneezing, um, lying down, getting up, all of those things you're going to be covered by. So if you can strengthen your pelvic floor across those three breathing patterns, you shouldn't have any problem. So now I want you to imagine that you're kind of a few millimetres high and you're standing at the entrance of the deep pelvic floor. So just at the bottom of the pelvic floor before we go up into the internal organs. Um, and just imagine moving up inside it. As the pelvic floor contracts, I want you to imagine what the muscles are doing around it. So the muscles will be contracting inwards, but they'll also be pulling upwards at the same time. So it's not just the feeling of moving up, it's the contraction of the circumference becoming smaller all around and moving up at the same time. And that's the idea that I want you to get when you're doing your pelvic floors. So um, to get into position, um, the easiest position for you to, this, to do this in when you're beginning is to lie down on your side on the floor, on your left side, sorry, um, and then bring your knees up as ca as close as you can to your chest, obviously, um, support your knees if you need to, if you're further along in pregnancy with a pillow in between. So bring them up as close as you can to your chest or up to your bump, and then practice contracting your brain. Uh, your pelvic floor with the breathing patterns that I just talked about. So the feeling of drawing up and inside you and imagine what's going on, visualize it in your head so the, the, the cupola, the fruit bowl is contracting inwards and upwards and practice over the breathing patterns and then relax completely for five breaths and just feel the weight of your organs just dilating the space and relaxing all the tone in your pelvic floor. And this is important because you want the pelvic floor to be completely relaxed before you try the next contraction. Otherwise, the pelvic floor will hold some tone from the first contraction that you did and you won't be getting a complete contraction on your next set, on your next exercise. So relax completely for five breaths and then we go to sss. Breathe for five set, uh, breaths and then relax completely and relax for five breaths and then we'll go to the last one so this is letter H so so <sighs> contract breathe for five breaths keep the contraction and then relax completely and let it go and then you want to repeat those uh, five to ten times for each breathing pattern um, and that should do, that should cover you for your deep pelvic floor exercise. So you make sure you do those um, a few times a day and then um, in the next video we'll come on to the more advanced pelvic floor exercises and that'll be the last one. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's helped you understand about the pelvic floor a little bit better. I'd love your comments, so please leave them in the, in the box at the bottom and um, I will see you in the next video. Okay, bye.